What's the goal of the social computing lab? To understand the behavior, at, or basically our focus is to understand the interaction between social behavior and information technology. That's in, in, you know, in one sentence, okay? We do two things. We try to understand that social behavior by analyzing very large pieces of data, as you heard, and also we uh, give um, um, you know, we also provide theoretical models that we validate and so on. I mean, I, I come from a very scientific discipline. And at the same time, we like to develop methods and mechanisms for harvesting information on a collective sense. Okay, those are the two things. So we, we have a methodology that basically allows us to harvest that information through some of the tools I described today. And we also like just to try to find out new phenomena. Because if you see new phenomena and surprises, as your colleague said, I think that then that leads to very, very interesting um, aspects of what we do and useful things for Hewlett Packard as well. With the web, information that used to be very scarce and therefore valuable has lost its value, economic value. And therefore, the only thing valuable today is yours and mine attention. That's all. People pay a lot of money to get attention. People pay a lot of money to get attention to themselves, to their website, to their businesses, and so on. Okay. Actually, I was at uh, INSEAD when we did a very interesting experiment. We showed that people are actually willing to pay money in exchange for attention from a group that just would applaud them or something of that sort. What were the findings of your, of your research? There were several. One of them was to discover this interplay between novelty and popularity as drivers of attention to websites, okay, in general. And, and ways of, the other one was to study, when we looked at the propagation of uh, news and so on through viral marketing type things, we noticed that they didn't propagate as fast as, or as far as we thought it did. Okay, not fast, far. Okay, that's another one. Another one was in a, re a very recent study I did on how opinion, public opinion forms on the web, on the internet. And it has characteristics that are very, very different from the way it forms in the, uh, in the world offline. For instance, we know that in, in the world offline there is the so-called group polarization, where the opinions tend to get polarized to left or right or whatever, in politics or towards one product or the other. In the web, we see exactly the opposite trend. We see that if you look at, say, the reviews of books or movies in the Internet Movie Database and Amazon, what we notice there is that, say, books that start with very high ratings, uh, as a function of time, they start, the ratings go down. And books that start with very low ratings, they go up over time. The rating goes up. And that, I think, has to do, that's my explanation, that if you're going to write a review of something, and people have already reviewed it 75 times, why bother unless you disagree with the prevailing view? Okay, which is very different from the way we, we, this, we go into public discourse, where everybody's giving an opinion at the same time, all the time. What do you think has changed with all those such social networks? What? I don't think that much has changed. I think they are very popular. I mean, people are very impressed by the growth. MySpace is even, I think, bigger than you know, Facebook and so on. I, I think that uh, Facebook is a phenomenon that is also in, it, it provides people with a certain illusion. Uh, I just asked a lady from the BBC, how many people do you have in Facebook as friends? 90. She said, but there are few compared to others. See, that's interesting. How many do you actually interact with? Two. So this is why I was talking about going back to the village of what I call the dawn of the age of intimacy. I think we're going to start discovering that even though we thought that the web would make us available to the world and being able to reach everybody, the fact is that we interact with very few people most of the time. So interactions are becoming uh, sort of more intimate in the sense of the number of people that I interact in a given day is fairly small. I don't know about you, I have a lot of contacts in my phone. The number of phone calls that I make is fairly limited. The number of emails that I make, I mean, there might be lots of emails, but go to very few people compared to my list. Okay, And I, I think Facebook is a phenomenon that perhaps people will eventually tire of. I don't know. This is something I cannot predict. But my space it keeps growing as well. It allows people to feel that they're in touch with others. It allows you to feel that there are a lot of people that are devoting attention to you. So if, if you have a group of 300 people, they're attending to me, they care, I'm their friend, and so on, because we crave that. But to what extent that's realistic or not, this will have to be shown over time. I'm just saying that these social networks are very easy to establish 
extremely hard to keep. They need a certain nurturing, like a garden and so on, you know. And I think that it's like friendships. If you don't talk to your friends, friends eventually sort of, you know, fade, right? So it's the same thing. It's not very different. So you see maybe uh, as, as You see this growth and eventually things temper. You join Facebook, everybody sends you an email. Hey, don't you remember me from high school, from kindergarten, whatever? And after a few messages, okay, bye-bye. Now I have to attend to my things. Again, your attention moves elsewhere. I think that we are very social people. We crave attention. We will always discover ways. We are not going to be as effective as Paris Hilton or Britney Spears or whoever you have in France today that plays that role. And these are people who are phenomenally good at getting at that resource called attention. And that is a resource that you can transfer. If I'm famous and I walk into a nightclub with someone, that person that is with me also is attended to. That's why people, celebrities, always have a cloud of people around them, because they get some of the attention that goes to the celebrity. Uh, you drive a car that, you know, everybody looks at, that's attention that you got. That's why people trade money for attention. That's why people trade power for glory. That's why people want to be in statues and, and so on, you know. Uh, look at, uh, in France, La Légion d'Honneur. It's something that people recognize, it's recognition, it's status, and status brings attention.